So I'm going to be doing a live Q&A session here on the official Black Veil Brides group page. And I'm going to go ahead and post a question. Hey guys. This is Jake Pitts from it could be. I'm here for a bit to answer any questions you have. So make them good ones. Let's go. All right, here we go. Posting. So for this, I'm going to screen cap the questions I answer, answer them in the video. This is for all you people who missed this or if you want to see the video version of this. So, hello, man. I want to know where those lovely dogs of yours names come from and then it says and are I don't know that's the only thing that's there so oh uh, my dogs names they don't really come from anywhere basically uh, I don't know I just have a thing where I name pets very quickly and I see the animal and I know what its name should be so when I got Trixie um, she just looked like a Trixie to me basically um, when we got Ernie uh, we were actually looking online at the pictures of the dogs, and we found we we weren't actually looking at Ernie. It was a different dog, and he it looked like a, a tank, and we were gonna call it Tank. Um, but when we went there and actually saw the dog, it ended up being a female, and we wanted a male. And also, it was a very yappy little little kind of crazy one. And we were like, oh, I don't know about that one. I mean, Ernie's pretty crazy, but uh, we ended up uh, seeing that Ernie was a male. And he was the brown color, and he was, uh, you know, we just fell in love with him instantly. And he just looked goofy to me, and I think a goofy name is Ernie, so we called him Ernie. It just, it was like that, you know, just came came to me right away. So that's the best answer I have for that. What would you be personally be doing if you were not in BVB? I would probably be working some shitty job like I was before I was in a successful band, trying to become successful in a band. Will you come to Bulgaria? You have so many fans here. We would absolutely love to. I'm not even sure exactly where that's at, but I mean, I'm all down for traveling all over the world and playing places we've never played, and we have never played there before, so hopefully one day we'll come to Bulgaria. Do I enjoy doing these vlogs? Uh, is it a pain? Um, honestly, it's not a pain, and I do enjoy doing it. You know, I, I, I'm getting used to it now. I was kind of, it was kind of awkward at first, but I'm getting used to... Uh, being in front of the cameras and whatnot, so um, the only time it's kind of a pain is when I'm not really doing anything during the, during the day, and I feel like I need to put something up for you guys to watch. So, you know, sometimes it's me just trying to take a fish back to the, the store or whatever, or it's just me blabbing about my workout today or or whatnot. And you know, sometimes I'm not I'm not always doing the most exciting thing every day. So, uh, hopefully, it's not too boring to watch. But you know, I want I want there to be exciting things for you guys to see, and uh, hopefully. You know I'll be able to provide that but I apologize uh, if it's boring sometimes so that's really the only pain in the ass there is when I'm not really sure what to film or what to talk about so I just try to find something to blab about hey Jake what's your favorite place to play honestly I think uh, I mean I love playing everywhere uh, all the shows are always so much fun and you know different cities are a little more rowdy than others uh, you know lately on this last tour right at the end you know we were getting pretty burnt out, but Texas really brought it, and it was it just made us you know put on such a better show. So, the crazier the crowd goes, the more circle pits, the more mosh pits, whatever you want to call them, uh, the more jumping, the more you guys go nuts, the more we will go nuts. So, um, I would have to say probably my favorite city to play would be London, England, um, just because we get to put on our full production show with Pyro and um, all that kind of stuff. So it really it's just a bigger scale show and it's really fun to put on the full production so I would have to say London's my favorite place. What's my favorite show that I've played so far on the Black Mass Tour? Again, I'm gonna... I mean, the, it was a long tour so we started out in the UK and then we did the States and you know we were out for about three months just on that one... I mean it kind of just all ran together. Um, I'd have to say, you know, London's my favorite city to play the London show was awesome. It was definitely my favorite London show that we've played so far. Um, London was great. Uh, the shows in, uh, let's see, Dallas was really incredible. That was right towards the end, but Dallas really brought brought their A game. Uh, the crowd was incredible. So Dallas, you're good. 
Denver's always rad to play. New York City, Los Angeles. Um, you know, uh, all the shows are great. I can't pick just one, but uh, like I said, London's always up there. You guys are awesome. I know I won't be answered, but what do you love in life? Well, you will be answered. I mean, I'm a pretty simple person. What I love in life, um, family, friends, and my dogs. And I'm thankful to be able to tour the world and play music for a living. I've worked very hard my entire life to achieve this, and hopefully it goes on for many, many more years. And I get to continue to come play music for all you guys, and hopefully you guys keep supporting the music that we play. And, yeah, that's what I love in life. Favorite song on BBB4. Um, I think my favorite song is definitely Faithless. It's a heavy, 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 heavy song, so... I'm a metalhead, so I like the heavy stuff, so Faithless is definitely one of my favorite tracks. It's got great riffs, I think, and the chorus is just massive. I think it's the one of the best choruses on the whole album, so that's definitely my favorite song. Uh, as far as uh, another one, it, it's tough, because I think Walk Away is definitely a masterpiece. I think it's the best ballad-type song that we've ever done, and it has some of my best, my most favorite solo guitar work in there, uh, most tasteful, I think, so that's a runner up there as well. Jake, how is the long travels with the band? Is it boring? What do you do while traveling? Do you keep in contact with Andy, Ashley, Jinx, and CC often? Well, yeah, I keep in contact with them all. Some we're all in a business together being in this band, so we have to be. Um, you know, when we're off tour, we're writing music, um, you know, we hang out and uh, we run into each other randomly. I ran into Ashley the other day when I was getting tattooed. Um, let's see, traveling with the band. So we travel on a bus, and time does go a lot quicker. You know, back in the van days when we had to drive, it's very, very boring, and time goes very slow when you're driving and you're just staring at a road for hours and hours. A lot of the time, what I do is I film a bunch. Of, well, lately I've been filming stuff before I go on tour, so I have my external hard drive. I set my laptop up in my bunk with my drive and I edit videos. So like, I'll edit guitar lessons and then vlogging definitely uh, helps me kill time and whatnot. So, um, you know, stay pretty busy. I work out on the road as much as I can. And uh, it, I mean, yeah, it definitely gets boring. There's a lot of downtime where you're just kind of sitting around and waiting. You know, we wait for the meet and greets, we wait for sound check, or if we don't have sound check, we just kind of sit around. And then you wait for that hour before I start warming up and then, uh, you know, literally we're waiting around all day for the show, so um, that's the most exciting part of the day is the showtime. Jake Pitts, when are you going to create your guy's new album? Well, we just did. It just came out, so if you didn't know about it, go pick it up. It's Black Bell Bride, self-titled 4. It's out now. Go get it. All right, what is your favorite part about being in Black Bell Brides? Clearly that I get to do what I love. I get to play guitar and write music and play live in front of, you know, thousands of people. And it's one of the most amazing feelings in the world. So, I mean, I, I could name a million things, but the easiest answer is just being able to do uh, what I feel like I was put here to do. You know, it's always been my dream to play music for a living and play in front of as many people as I can. So, um, I think I'm well on my way there. <laughs> so. That's my favorite thing, being in Blackfield Brides, is I don't have to work a normal day job. Uh, I get to have fun for work. What is the most embarrassing event to happen on the latest tour? Um, hmm. Um, fuck. What is your favorite BBB song and why? This song, Carolyn, obviously is a, a big one for me because, uh, you know, I I didn't write the lyrics to that song. Andy wrote the lyrics, but I wrote all the music, and that was kind of uh, there, there was a time where my mom uh, I don't know. It's just an emotional thing I felt, and I you know I got some bad news one day, and I went home. I was working a day job at that time, and I went home and plugged my guitar in and started recording, and that's what came out. And that's just kind of like the music emotionally how I felt at that time. And it, I think, musically, it came out very well, kind of explaining how I felt. Um, then, uh, 
I guess uh, for newer stuff, um, I don't know. I mean, I, I like the whole new album. It's just uh, for me personally, it was. I think it's my best solo work, and you know, it's fun having all the guitar riffs and the craziness going on again. So, uh, it's it's you know, Carolyn and the whole new album were my favorite BBB songs. What is your best memory with Black Veil Brides? I mean, as far as uh, best memories, you know, we've won awards, which are awesome. So, you know, being at the Krang Awards and winning, being at the Golden God Awards and winning, um, probably one of my proudest moments, uh, best memories with Black Veil Brides would be the Golden God Awards, I believe it was 2012, Jinx and I won the Best Guitarist Awards. So for me, that was a huge accomplishment and, you know, it's, it's all fan voted. So it's all because of you guys. So... Um, I have you guys to thank for that, and it makes me feel really good, so thank you guys. What is my absolute favorite song to play live? <sighs> That's a tough one. We play a lot of songs. Um, I'm really enjoying playing the new stuff, so Faithless is really fun. In the end, it's always a fun song to play, just because it's, you know, everybody knows that song, and the crowd goes nuts during it, so it's just awesome to see the crowd reaction during that song, and everyone jumping up and down, so in the end, it's definitely a, a, a good favorite song to play. I love playing that song. And it's at the end of the set, so it's kind of like... Uh, th there's mixed emotions there. It's either, depending on if I'm having a good show or a bad show, it's either like, oh, thank God this is the last song, or it's a, a feeling of, I just want to keep playing, I want to keep going and going and going, and because, you know, we're having such a good time and time flies by and you realize, wow, this is the last song already. So it could go either way, but either way, it's a fun song to play. So I would say uh, Faithless and In the End. Have you guys started working on another album? And if so, when, when can we expect it? people we just put out an album what are you guys talking about we literally just released an album and we just did our first tour on this album cycle so no we haven't started working on a new album yet um we're very far from working on a new album because we just put one out so um no not at all i mean yes we're always coming up with ideas and you know i have my phone here and if a riff pops in my head i'll do -do 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 and you know sing it out in into my phone so i have that idea and if I'm playing guitar and something comes out, I record it real quick. Or same thing with my phone. I put the notes on and I play it real quick so I have that kind of like written down. But uh, no, we have not started work on a new album because we just released one. Uh, if you didn't know that, you can go pick that album up. It's called Black Veil Brides, self-titled, or 4, whatever you want to call it. And uh, go pick it up and check it out. And we just started touring on it. So we're touring all year. We're going to be traveling all over the world touring all year long. So that's what we're working on right now. What was your biggest inspiration when you started playing guitar? Uh, for me, um, well, the main reason I, I picked up a guitar was because I heard Metallica's Black Album, and uh, I wanted to sound like that. So I, I had an acoustic guitar that I got when I was 10, and I wasn't really into it quite yet. So when I turned 13, I started getting more into music. Uh, you know, I heard the Black Album, and it wasn't just the guitar playing. Like, James Hetfield was a big inspiration for me, um, and just the style, you know, the heaviness, the riffs, and I wanted to sound like that, and it was the guitar tone that, that caught me, and it was just, it sounded so awesome to me. And, uh, you know, that credit goes to Bob Rock, which we just did our last record with, so, um, you know, come for Soko from when I first started to now, it, it's pretty pretty awesome to have gotten to to work with Bob and uh, and do all that and just hear all the stories and, and whatnot. So it was really cool. Um, so Metallica, you know, was a huge inspiration for me when I first started. Um, and then as I progressed with my playing, you know, my mom was a big part of me understanding things. Like she taught me how to, you know, I would play a guitar line and I would ask her, how do I play a harmony to this? How do I harmonize guitar parts? And she explained it to me on her piano and, you know, played the harmony on the piano as I played it on guitar and explained to me how to count up, you know, to thirds and fourths and fifths and sevenths and all that kind of stuff. And so it was all her that taught me how to play guitar harmonies and do dual harmonies and all of that and learning arpeggios and, and all that kind of stuff. So um, all credit for that stuff goes to her. How do you guys write songs as a band? What is the process of it all? Um, it's different for every song, honestly. Sometimes it starts with a guitar riff, and it could be what becomes the first guitar riff. It could be a chorus progression. Um, 
a lot of times, you know, when I start a song, I'll have a riff, and that's how the whole idea comes. So you have a riff that then goes into another idea, and then you come up with a chorus. Um, so that's one way it starts. Um, another way it starts is with a vocal melody, um, just kind of, oh, I've got this da-da-da-da-da thing. That's not a very good example of a vocal melody, but it's a melody. So you start out with a vocal melody and come up with some music around it and find the chords that, okay, this will go really well. Like an example of a song that was written that way um, would be um, a lot of the Wretched and Divine record was written uh, more that style. You know, a lot of the stuff previous was more riff orientated and then melody and lyrics come after. Uh, Wretched and Divine was more let's focus on building the melodies first and then putting the music to it and building it around that. So uh, typically, you know, I mean, it, it's different for every single song. Every song starts a different way. Somebody has an idea and we either run with that idea and see where it goes and if it develops into something cool, we take that idea and we build it into a song and then it becomes what it is. So it starts as a very simple idea at first and it's kind of like, say, building a house. You have, it's like building a house without a plan, basically. You have this idea that you want and then you kind of start putting pieces together and you start building your foundation for it. You build the skeleton of the song or the frame of it and then you go in and you fill in all these parts. You start adding stuff to it. You build it up to a full production song, record it in a studio, and mix it, and then you've got, bam, you've got, you've got a big song. Um, so it all starts differently. A lot of ideas start to get developed, and then you go, uh, this other idea is way better, let's focus on that, and a lot of ideas get thrown away. Um, so it's just, it's a creative process. You just get your ideas out. They're not all gonna be good, so, but you gotta get them out. You've gotta get out the bad ones to find the good ones. Want more tattoos? What? Absolutely. Um, I just got tattooed the other day. I got my arm finished, finally. My right arm is done. It's not peeling yet, but it's got some stuff kind of filled in there. Um, I'm getting this stuff filled in over here so it all blends in, so it's all like one big thing. And then I'm moving on to getting my right leg tattooed, um, like my calves and foot and all the way down. Uh, so I'm getting a sock. Um, and I have a big idea for that. I don't know exactly what the design is going to turn out like yet. I have my idea for it. Um, so you guys will see soon. I'm getting tattooed at the end of the month. Uh, Going to have it all outlined. So I'll be showing you guys in my vlogs there so you can go check out my vlogs. Uh, obviously where you're watching this video right now on my YouTube channel. And I have my vlog playlist. So go click on that and you can watch all my life shit on there and what I do. Okay, what else? What else? Let's pick a couple here. Blah, 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 blah. When did you first pick up a guitar and how did you learn to sweep pick? I first picked up a guitar when I was 10 and decided I didn't want to play yet. Uh, it took me three years to go, okay, I actually want to do this. So um, I got a cheap electric guitar when I was 13. Uh, it was like the beginning of the year, so um, I think I started, I, I ended up, it was just before that, uh, I turned 13 in August and it was towards the end of the year and I started messing around on this little acoustic that my dad had got me for my 10th birthday and he kept coming home from work, you know, seeing that I'm messing around on it and he was like, okay, that's weird and then after about two weeks of every day I would had it, you know, after school I would go home and pick up that guitar and start just messing, I had no idea what I was doing but I was just plucking around on it, playing single note strings, just trying to play some melodies and, and figure things out. And uh, then he kind of asked me, are you serious about this? And I was like, yeah, I want to play guitar. So I ended up taking guitar lessons uh, starting January to, uh, when I was 13 years old. I don't even know what year that was. Um, it, was a, it was a while back. Um, so I took guitar lessons for about four months, kind of got my bearings and learned how to play power chords and chords and bar chords. And, you know, my teacher would teach me some, you know, Metallica songs or some Green Day songs or whatever. And, uh, so in about seven months, you know, I was playing songs. I, I wasn't shredding or doing anything like that. I didn't learn how to sweep pick until 2004 when I was living in Hawaii. And it was uh, Chris Norris from, well, he was in the band um, Darkest Hour. So he had like a homemade little guitar instructional DVD. And I always thought he, you know, he was a shredder, super shredder, like rad guitar parts. Um, really, really digged his style. And uh, so I bought a DVD from him and he sent it to me and it looked like it was like hand pressed kind of deal and 
that's how I learned a sweet pick. He had a sweet picking lesson in there. And when I first watched it, I was like, I'm never going to be able to learn how to do this. And, and it was right then when it all clicked to me, I hear all these crazy solos and I'm like, I had no idea what or how it was achieved. And that opened up my, you know, my mind to, wow, okay, this is how they do it. So I attempted to learn it and I sat in my room for probably five hours straight trying to get my hands to sync up. And it took about five hours straight. I was just, I kept just going and going. I was trying really slow, you know, just starting out really slow. And I just, I could not get him to lock up. And it, it was almost for me like when, uh, you know, I play drums too. So when you're first starting out, any drummers out there, you know this thing, you know, you're trying to break your right, like your hand on your hi-hats. You're trying to break that from your foot because you want to like your double kick. You, you want to follow that. It's kind of the same thing. Once you finally break that like pattern and your right hand is doing its own thing, it's like a... Ah, uh, moment, and it's like all of a sudden you're like 50 times better because you can actually play now. So it was kind of the same thing for sweet picking. It took me a little while to to sync up my hands and get them to work together in the the sweet motion and be on the same string at the same time. Once that happened, it it came pretty quick. A session here is not going very well today. Is my first one. Doing these questions on Facebook's a pain because it doesn't just let you reply right to the question. I have to copy it, and copying it is somehow the most horrific, non... Like, it just doesn't copy very well. It's, it's kind of insane. Uh, Facebook needs to figure this one out a little bit. So I'm having to copy the questions and then post it in the comments down below. I don't know if anybody's even reading this stuff. They're probably thinking, why isn't he answering questions? So they're in the comments below. But anyway, hopefully this video will clear a bunch of stuff up. Stopped recording, I don't know how long ago. Next question, what do you like in France? Well, like I just said, which didn't record, uh, I'm kind of a nerd for architecture and skyscrapers and all that kind of stuff. I, I'm just intrigued by them and I think they're cool. Um, if I wasn't in a band and I was smarter, I would love to be an uh, architect, but I don't have the brains for that shit. So I enjoy people who are able to create those massive structures and I've been to the Eiffel Tower three times and been up to the top once and the view is awesome up there. So that's what I like about Paris. Hopefully I get to see more of it someday. Will you guys meet fans before or after the show in Vancouver? If we happen to run into you, uh, then absolutely. You know, uh, we'll probably, well, we, we typically try to if we're not too exhausted or, you know, we've got a little energy left after the show. We'll come out and say hi to people, you know, hanging out. I don't know. I'm not sure what venue we're playing there. Um, so, you know, we always do our best to try and say hey to you guys uh, that are sticking outside or sticking around and, uh, you know, sign some stuff for you and take a picture or whatnot. Um, so, yeah, we'll see. Make sure you're recording, camera. What are you most afraid of? Um, I don't know. I mean, what I'm most afraid of, this is kind of a uh, personal fear that I deal with. Um, we were in Japan during the massive earthquake in, I think it was 2011, or was it 2000, it wasn't 2013, I think it was 2011. Um, it was our first time to Japan, and that 8.9 earthquake and tsunami hit, and it was the most terrifying thing, so I don't like earthquakes. Living in LA, I feel them every once in a while, um, and like, I'll be sitting here working, and I'll feel like, like, when one happens and it's a little shaking, I'll see like my guitars that are hanging on the wall here. I'll see them moving, and it just, like, it literally instantly takes me back to being in Japan and that whole shaking, and it just gets my heart racing, and, and it's like, okay, I know it's not a big one, like, I'm going to be okay, and I just kind of, like, panic for a second, so it just, like, startles me big time. Um, and then also with that shaking, it, I, I've never been afraid of flying or anything, and I'm not afraid to fly. But hitting like severe turbulence and stuff just drives me bananas. I can't stand it. Um, I have to get prescribed. I try not to take them, but I usually end up, you know, if I have them, I'll take it. Uh, Anti-anxiety meds when I fly. Um, been on some flights with some pretty gnarly turbulence, and I just can't seem to catch a break from the turbulence. It's like getting worse. When I remember flying as a kid, it doesn't seem like there was ever turbulence. Um, now it's like every flight I'm on is insane. Um, that just kind of, it 
takes me, it triggers something and takes me back to Japan. I don't know what it is, but I don't like planes that are shaking and bouncing around up in the sky. It creeps me out. And like plane crashes, I'm always like thinking I'm going to die on the plane. And, and I know the chances of that happening are probably, it pro it's probably not going to be the way I die. But it's the fact that, I mean, especially this year, there's been a lot of plane crashes or planes go missing or you know, there was just a, another one that went missing in the Java Sea or whatever, hitting bad weather. So it's the thing that's back in my mind that there's a chance that it could happen because it does happen. So that terrifies me. Why do you always keep the curtains in your apartment closed? It's a bit dark. I absolutely agree with you. It's always very dark. Um, so here's the main reason. Um, I live in an apartment complex. Hopefully, I'll get out of here soon. I'm staying here because it's in LA. I'm centrally located, and all my stuff is set up here, and it's just easy, and it's literally the cheapest place in LA right now, um, you know, because I've been here for a while, so my rent has only gone up $30 in the last five years. Um, so it's a place to come home to, but it's also a place that, you know, I'm on tour, you know, I spend more time not here than I am here. So it's just kind of like, here's my place at home in LA. Um, but I want to be uh -huh. able to move into a house sometime soon. Um, that house probably will not be in Los Angeles because they're so damn expensive here. Um, but uh, yeah, I don't know. The reason that, uh, let, let me answer the actual question now. The reason the curtains are always closed um, I do open them sometimes, but my dogs love to bark at anyone or anything or any noise outside, even with them closed and they see a shadow go by, they bark. So mainly to try to keep the barking down, but it doesn't seem to really do that well of a job. Also, I don't really want people creeping in, looking in my window and seeing me jumping around, working out or doing whatever I'm doing, sitting there yelling at the TV playing Call of Duty. I don't know. It creeps me out. I don't want people watching me. What do you do in your free time? I don't really have too much free time. I guess if you want to call it my free time, I do vlogs and stuff. I edit video. I make guitar lessons for you guys. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm going to be starting this Ask Jake thing. This isn't really the the, the has, hashtag Ask Jake thing yet, but uh, I'm doing this on the, the official BVB group page. So I'll be doing them on, you know, my YouTube channel, hopefully more often, and hopefully this it'll be a little... Uh, more of a smooth transition into that but um I don't know I like making videos I like learning about video editing you know I bought a green screen to mess around with that and I like to stay busy um, I'd say the biggest thing I probably do in my free time is I like exercise I work out I'm working on a fitness company and a fitness channel on YouTube and if I'm not working or whatever doing that kind of stuff it's a lot of work uh, actually all my free time's kind of been uh taken up by doing this stuff which will you know I, I enjoy doing it but um i like to play some video games you know i've got an xbox one and i'm a big call of duty fan so i play advanced warfare and i'm actually i think it's the i'm the best at this advanced warfare game than i have been at any of the call of duties i'm usually always just getting like blasted and it just it makes me so frustrated, but I'm actually pretty decent so far. Uh, my kill-death ratio is, I believe, damn close to one. I've been doing a lot better. You know, at first I started out, I wasn't doing very good. I got the grip of things, learned the levels, and now, you know, I only play multiplayer. I don't actually play the campaign. I've only done that once on Black Ops 2, but uh, I just like to play multiplayer. I think it's fun playing with other people, you know, all around the world. And some people are so damn good, it blows my mind, but uh, I'm... I'm average. I'm, I think I'm a little above average in the game. You know, I'll have some bad games, but usually I'm doing pretty good. Usually I'm getting more kills than deaths, so that's what counts. What's your favorite album of BVB? This is brand new one we just did. I think it's our best work yet. Uh, I think it's a little more thrashy and heavy, so I'm digging that. Yeah, I think the songs are cool. It was the most fun, I think it was the most fun record that we've made so far. I just really enjoy the process of recording. Sometimes it's very stressful, and, you know, it gets stressful when you're time crunched, but, uh, I think this was the most uh, laid back and kind of chilled out version of making an album yet. And it was just fun. You know, everyone gelled, got along great. 
uh, with our producer and engineers and everybody was just everybody got along great and we were all worked as a team and it knocked the thing out and it just came out awesome and we're all proud of what we did and I think it's my best solo work um, you guys may have a different opinion on that but to me I think it's my most tasteful and melodic style of soloing so far it's not really anything I've done before so I think I kind of pushed my boundaries and that's what makes me think that this is the best BBB record yet Nye, 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 nye. Pizza or sahi? I'm gonna guess you meant sushi. I'm not sure what sahi is. It sounds interesting. I mean, I would probably try it. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and pretend you mean sushi. So if that's what you mean, uh, definitely sushi. Sushi is my favorite food. I would eat that every day for the rest of my life if I could. Um, I don't know where the whole pizza. Well, I know where it started. It started because we were in the Japan earthquake. I'm going to go ahead and clear up this pizza myth thing here right now. Let's do it. So, Japan, 2011, earthquake, 8.9, the tsunami thing. Yeah, we were there for that. And uh, it was terrifying. We survived, obviously. And literally the entire city of Tokyo was shut down. It was the weirdest thing ever. So... I was trying to get some food because I was hungry and I couldn't find anything and I tweeted something out of anger. Oh, I just wish I could get a pizza or something. And that sparked for years. Everyone thinks I'm obsessed with pizza. Okay, well, here's the thing. No shit pizza's good. If you don't like pizza, you're retarded. Everybody likes pizza. It's bread and cheese. It tastes good. So I don't eat it really because it's not good for you i like to eat healthy stuff so you know if i was going to have a cheat day or something i'm going to go get sushi so absolutely sushi is my favorite um and i'll choose it over pizza um i'm not saying i'll never eat pizza again in my life absolutely i'll have a slice of pizza someday um just not right now because i don't fancy that thing but uh that's how that all started. I'm not obsessed with pizza. I don't eat it every day. I don't eat it for every meal. Otherwise, I'd be a fat ass. So, clearly, come on. Come on, guys. Do you think I eat sushi or do I eat pizza? You you decide. Stop bringing me pizza mugs and pizza shirts and Papa John's gift cards. I don't need that shit. Thank you, though. It's flattering. I appreciate it. I'm not talking shit about your gifts, but... Um, bring me sushi gift cards next time. I don't know if that even exists, but that'd be cool. All right, I'm gonna answer two more and then I'm out of here. Here's a fitness question. Fitness related, do you count your macros? Here's the thing, I've tried doing that and uh, I've, I've not done it and I have done it and now I'm not doing it again because it'll drive you mad. Basically, if you have a typical idea of nutrition, I mean, Clearly, you've, you've got to know that eating, say, a big piece of lasagna is not going to be as healthy as some steamed rice, veggies, and a chicken breast, a grilled, skinless, boneless chicken breast. Clearly, you put those two in front of each other, most people are going to choose the lasagna because it's, 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 you know, to most people, that will taste better. To me, the chicken, rice, and... and veggies will taste better because it's clean and I enjoy that stuff. I enjoy knowing I'm putting something clean in my body and that it's actually going to fuel me and benefit me instead of um, making me feel sluggish and fat and have diarrhea. My advice would be not to count your macros but more of like kind of round them maybe. So generally you know about how much protein is in a chicken breast. Well you know what you need to hit for the day so I just kind of ballpark it like okay I'm going to eat Say so I'm eating six meals right now a day, so I need to have about this much protein in each meal. I need to have about this much carbs in each meal and this much fat in each meal. Now, I'm not doing that in every meal. You know, I might eat a whole avocado in one of the meals or, you know, a half an avocado in a couple meals throughout the day instead of putting a little bit on each meal. Um, but, you know, basically, uh, the, instead of driving yourself nuts, counting your macros, Half of your plate should be protein. The other half should be, you know, either um, complex carbs. You can have some simple carbs. Um, if you're trying to lose weight, you want to go more for the fibrous carbs, uh, complex stuff. Um, 
me, I personally, I've been on the brown rice thing for a long time and it's starting to get old. So I found that, you know, brown rice is more fibrous and it makes you feel fuller longer and it digests slower. But I like white rice better. So I've been eating jasmine rice, just steamed white rice. I've been eating chicken breast, salmon, mainly as my proteins, and veggies like asparagus, broccoli, spinach. That's basically what my diet consists of right now. And then I do, for my post-workout, you know, I do my uh, protein shake with a half cup of, oat. well, my breakfast, I'm eating three whole eggs, uh, three quarters of a cup of egg whites, which equals four egg whites, and a half cup of oats. So my breakfast is that every morning. And then the other meals are that. After my workout, I have my post-workout shake, which is um, whey protein, a half cup of oats, and a banana, ice and water. And that's my post-workout shake. Um, today was a grueling workout, for example. I Basically, I do that because when you work out with extreme exercise, you deplete all your glycogen. And you need those carbs to restore that, to bring your energy levels back up and help repair your muscles. So that, when you put those carbs with the protein directly after your intense exercise, it helps your body recover quicker and get to building that muscle back. And uh, another thing, just a quick tip for you guys who, if you're looking to uh, into the fitness and you're exercising, uh, proper rest is huge. You don't recover like I'm not recovering right now I had intense exercise right now my muscles aren't building I mean they're probably repairing a little bit but they repair when you're asleep so you need to get try to get eight hours of sleep a night um, if you can get eight hours you'll be good to go here's the question would you ever bring out custom clothes lines separate to get me fitness yeah absolutely I mean that was something I you know wanted to do a couple years back and wasn't able to at the time so uh, I'm kind of working on the get mean stuff now and I'm, I'm kind of trying to incorporate like a custom line that I would like to do uh, with fitness side of stuff as well so I the, the, the new line I have coming out um, you know we're doing some fitness stuff right now you know we got the fitness tanks that's just kind of the first thing um, more so to promote the company, but I have uh, the clothing line Get Mean, which is coming out, uh, and hopefully that'll be getting released soon. And that's going to be more, you know, stylish stuff. You know, it's going to be soft material, uh, you know, uh, not hard, heavy, scratchy cotton that's really thick and hot. It's going to be lightweight, you know, nice, fine jersey cotton kind of stuff um, with just cool designs and, and cool stuff on it, you know, stuff that I, I would wear. So... Um, hopefully I'll be wearing it on the next tour, um, but as far as a custom clothing line, yeah, absolutely. I would love to have like uh, a clothing line where I have my own style of jeans and tank tops and shirts and, and jackets and all that kind of stuff. So that's something I'd definitely love to do down the line. So I don't know. Give me ideas. What, do, what would you guys want? What would you guys like? What would you want me to do if I were to do something like that? What, what would you want to see? What would you want to wear? Um, give me ideas and maybe I'll see what I can get going anyway guys I'm going to end it there wrap this one up so that's going to be my, be my first non-official official hashtag thing ask Jake so I'll be doing more of these and uh, probably kind of asking like maybe on Twitter or something to hashtag ask Jake and I'll take a bunch of questions and then I'll answer them on video like this and post that up so think of some rad questions, some funny questions, anything. Uh, and I'll see if I'll answer your question in the next one. So I'll post online when I'm ready for you guys to send me questions. Or you can do it. If I see a good one, I'll screen cap it. But uh, that'll be hashtag ask Jake.